Uh, hello and welcome to my Nobel Prize assignment. My name is uh, Julia Chilcott. I'm going to be talking about Linda B. Buck. She won the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 2004 and she uh, was studying at the time at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle, Washington in the United States. A uh, brief uh, look into her personal life. She was born in Seattle, Washington on January 29th, 1947. Her father was an electrical engineer and her mother was a stay-at-home mom. She was the second of three daughters. In 1994, she met Roger Brent, who was a biologist at the time, and they got married in 2006. She received her Bachelor of Science in Psychology and Microbiology in 1975 from the University of Washington, and then she received her PhD in Immunology in 1980 at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. She won the Nobel Prize for her research related to sensation. It was for their discoveries of odorant receptors in the organization of the olfactory system. And uh, this award was a split equally with a man that she studied with named Richard Axel. For a summary of her research, um, beginning back in 1965 with Robert Gestland, uh, she conducted numerous uh, electrophysiological studies that showed different olfactory sensory neurons uh, that are depolarized by different odorants. Later, John Amour, uh, another coworker, proposed that odorant receptor proteins varied in their affinity for different odorants. She then started doing research based on three basic assumptions. One, that odorant receptors are selectively expressed in the olfactory epithelium. Two, that receptors would be encoded by a multi-gene family. And three, that odorant receptors would be related to other types of receptors that interact with intercellular G proteins. Uh, she first used a polymerase chain reaction to look for receptors expressed in the olfactory epithelium of the nose and related it to known GPCRs. Then they designed 11 degenerate uh, oligonucleotide primers, and they use these primers to amplify related sequences in cDNA prepared from rat olf olfactory epithelium RNA. Uh, from this, they obtained 64 different PCR products when they performed uh, ag ag agarose gel electrophoresis, and uh, they cut the DNA in each PCR product with a restriction enzyme. Uh, when they were cutting with the restriction enzyme, they found that band 13 was cut into a very large number of fragments, and this suggested that it contained multiple members of a multi-gene family. Uh, band 13 was then cloned and sequenced, and it was found to uh, encode novel proteins with the hallmarks of GPCRs, which were all related, but they were all unique. Uh, using that these DNAs as a probe, they then isolated a series of related cDNAs from an olfactory uh, epithelium cDNA library, and then from later studies, they revealed evidence for about a thousand different olfactory receptor genes in mice. They then hybridized uh, labeled OR gene probes to sections throughout the mouse nose as like a map. And these studies showed that the olfactory epithelium had distinct spatial zones that expressed non-overlapping sets of OR genes. These findings then told us that neurons with receptors for one odorant must be interspersed with neurons that have receptors for other odorants, uh, and that each neuron only expresses one OR gene. They then exposed uh, mouse olfactory sensory neurons to a series of odorants using calcium imaging, and from this they could isolate each response uh, neuron to determine the OR gene that it was expressing. These results indicated that ORs are uh, combinatorially used to encode different odor identities, and as seen in the charts below, they could um, they could show or make the mouse experience something and record the interaction with it, and then from this they knew what genes were encoded for which odorants. 
uh, they continued their studies in mice and it indicated that axons of thousands of sensory neurons with the same OR converged into only two to four um, glomeruli and it further indicated that sensory information is broadly organized into four zonal sets in the nose and produces a stereotyped sensory map. To determine the organization in the cortex, they made transgenic mice using barley lechin specific antibodies and they detected these barley lechin antibodies in the olfactory sensory neurons in the olfactory epithelium and these relay neurons in the bulb and the neurons in the olfactory cortex as well. And with this, it indicated that the system they had created could travel across the two synapses and label the connected neurons to um, the ones uh, earlier upstream. And they detected these labeled cortical neurons in very distinct clusters, which they mapped on the right. At age 74, for an update, neither uh, Richard nor Linda are still experimenting, but in 2008, a high-resolution copy number variation map was shown to reflect the human olfactory receptor diversity and evolution. And then in 2010, there was an experiment conducted that created a topographic map of the olfactory system that related to humans. So most update research now is moving from uh, smaller uh, animals used in research into how we can map uh, the olfactory system specifically to learn about humans. And most research now is being used in cancer fighting and in human relation mapping to better understand the olfactory receptors for each individual. Um, continuing to explore, to explore, however, after her Nobel Prize, she did also study the mechanisms underlying odor perception um, through psychology and the means by which pheromones uh, elicit instinctive behaviors. She also studied the neural circuits that underline innate behaviors and basic drives, such as fear, appetite, and reproduction. She studied molecular techniques to uncover circuits. She studied defining their uh, composite neurons with genes that were expressed. She studied um, the uh, she studied and collected to compose chemical libraries that identified genes controlling aging and lifespan. And she started to define a central mechanism that can determine how lifespan uh, regulates the aging of cells throughout the body. Uh, how her findings benefited humanity. She really uh, was the basis for uncovering how the olfactory system works. And it was also fundamental to understanding the machinery um, within the olfactory system that controls the relay of sensory signals. In her own words, supporting basic science is a way that you can support the discovery of how systems work. This is critical to developing ways to prevent and cure disease. She opened many new doors for studying the brain, uh, and her research had numerous implications uh, for health research, and she really had held the key to understanding behaviors such as fear and aggression in uh, ways of sense. And those are my references. Uh, thank you for listening.